On January 25th, 90,000 people agreed to turn up for a day of revolution in Egypt. And they organized using Facebook. Never in my wildest dreams had I imagined that a product that I had built would impact the world in such a profound way. I was afraid of not following life's milestones, married at 25, 26, and kids at 30. I was afraid of having to struggle financially, and I was doing what was expected of me as a girl and as a woman. And in May of this year, I started my own company, Cove. After working on a product that impacted 700 million users, I'm starting from scratch. And I'm afraid of failing. I'm afraid of how people will perceive my work. And I live in this world of self-doubt, and sometimes that fear is even debilitating. Think of your biggest ambition, your biggest personal goal, a journey you wish you had embarked on. Now take a minute and think about what it would take to achieve that ambition, to achieve your goal. Are there barriers in your way? How would you have done things differently if you were not afraid? Most of the barriers that I faced are internal. And today, I want to talk about a few experiences that speak to these internal fears. So when you think of Facebook today, these are the pictures that come to mind. But when I first started working at Facebook in 2005, I was the first female engineer. You might find this really impossible to believe, but we found it extremely difficult to recruit people. We were a college-only website, and only college students used us. Everyone thought we were a fad, a trend that would soon disappear, and why wouldn't they? If you look at the list, we had a 21-year-old CEO, the company was basically run by recent college grads or college dropouts. For all of us, including the CEO, it was our very first job. And if you came to our office, we were about a Chinese restaurant, which is probably why it smelled most times, and all the walls were covered in graffiti. It was like living in college. We all lived in the same neighborhood, on the same block. We would trudge into work in our pajamas. Most days, we'd work until 4 a.m. in the morning and slept through most mornings. But we were working in something we truly believed in, something we loved to use, something we were absolutely passionate about. But there was always this element of fear and an element of uncertainty. It was right around this time that we built Facebook Photos, and it was a hugely successful launch. And we decided to build Newsfeed. So if you think back to 2005, to use Facebook, you basically had to go through one person's profile and then another's. It was like flipping through a telephone directory, but only much prettier, both the service and the people. Actually, let me show you what Facebook looked like in 2005. So if I wanted to find out who had married whom, or which one, if my friend had a little baby girl or a little baby boy, I had to hunt for all that information. I would go to one person's profile, and then another, and then another. It was an absolute pain. So we were sitting around with Mark one day, and we decided that we could do much better. We wanted to deliver a newspaper, a newspaper that told you personal stories from your high school friends, your college friends, cousins that lived in the next city over, and from people at work. We wanted to deliver 10 million personalized newspapers every single day. It was absolutely amazing. So we launched Newsfeed in the dead of the night. I wrote this blog post aptly titled Facebook gets a facelift. And we popped bottles of champagne and started celebrating. We watched these crazy logs scroll by. It was an absolute rush to see so many people using your product. And we decided to get some sleep after weeks of no sleep. And we went home feeling really happy and really proud. But we had no idea what was in store for us the next morning. We woke to hundreds of outraged users. Groups had formed in the middle of the night. Groups like I Hate Facebook and Ruchi's the Devil. News reporters were camped outside our offices, and people even started demonstrating outside the Facebook building. But amidst all the chaos and all the noise, we noticed something unusual. Even though people said they hated it, engagement had doubled. There were twice as many page views than there ever were before. The very people who hated it were able to spread their message, spread their word, because of Facebook newsfeed. 
For the first time ever, their personal stories were being seen by all their friends on the Facebook homepage. So if you fast forward approximately four years from then, on January 25th, 90,000 people agreed to turn out for a day of revolution in Egypt. And they organized using Facebook. Never in my wildest dreams had I imagined that a product that I had built would impact the world in such a profound way. So as I look back to the early days of Facebook newsfeed, I realize that it took courage to stand by our vision. If over 10% of your customer base threatens to boycott your product, most other companies would have backed down or rolled back the product. But we didn't. We straight true to our vision because we believed in it. And we didn't just do it once, we did it over and over again, which is why Facebook was able to build so many beautiful things. We were three engineers who had recently graduated and had never before built a distributed system in our lives. No one told us we couldn't do it. Not only did we build one of the largest distributed systems ever, we literally delivered 10 million personalized newspapers every single day. And we didn't do this once. Time and time again, we threw our engineers into impossible situations. We had one person build search, whereas down the road at Google, there were hundreds building web search. It, we didn't know the ceiling of our potential. We didn't know how many engineers it would take to solve the problem. Hell, we didn't even know if the problem could be solved. But it wasn't about the number of engineers, and it wasn't about experience, and it wasn't about genius. It was about not being afraid to learn. It was about having a vision and taking that first step and going for it. So this was a lesson that I was soon going to learn in my personal life as well. So to give you a little bit of background about myself, I studied electrical computer engineering from Carnegie Mellon University. And like most other people, I decided to do math modeling in a derivatives trading firm in a bank in New York City. But when I flew to New York City, I freaked out. I did not want to work on Wall Street like all my other friends were doing. So I packed my bags and on a whim flew out to California. And soon after, I joined Facebook. Everything sounds great so far, right? But here's the catch. I had promised my parents that after a year of working, I would come back home to get married. <laughs> so when that time approached, I took a sabbatical from Facebook and quite literally came to India to get married. It was an extremely rational decision. I was 25 years old, and in another year, I would be on the shelf. It was time to find a nice, handsome, intelligent, rich Indian boy and settle down. And I was a big fan of arranged marriages. It appealed to the engineer in me. They're practical, and they had a higher probability of succeeding. <laughs> so I came to India. I took pictures of myself. I wrote this fabulous bio, which was quite different from my resume. And I went on all these dates that my parents set me up on. Some dates were fabulous. Others were absolute disasters, and some were hilarious. So I would get to know these guys on these dates, but if I truly wanted to get to know these guys, I would look them up on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> so Facebook was a gold mine of information back in 2005. So if I wanted to know about the guy, I would look at who his friends were, check out his pictures, figure out who his interests were, and that's how I would truly get to know him. So after a while about doing this, I decided that this was not the life I wanted for myself. I was following this silly plan in life. I wanted to continue building products at Facebook, and I wanted to continue having an impact. And I came back to Facebook, and I built one of the products that I'm most proud of, Facebook Connect. And not only that, that is where I found my husband. And we got married. <laughs> over New Year's in 2010, and it was the best day of my life. I was afraid of the unknown. I was afraid of not following life's milestones, married at 25, 26, and kids at 30. I was afraid of having to struggle financially, and I was doing what was expected of me as a girl and as a woman. I was making all these crazy decisions, when I wasn't even in a relationship, and I didn't even have children. And I've seen so many women go through similar experiences. 
where they leave that next opportunity on the table, or they take a back seat at work because they're thinking of having children or they're thinking of getting married. Since I've decided to not leave before I have to, to not make compromises before I have decisions to make, to not be afraid of the unknown, because that's where the most exciting opportunities lie, to raise my hand and actually ask for these opportunities. So this year, I made the most unconventional decision of my life. I quit Facebook. Everyone thought I was crazy. My friends were saying, are you insane? We had over 700 million users, and quite frankly, we're on track to being one of the most successful companies to IPO. And I was working on these things that was impacting millions of users. So why did I leave? I left because my passion was being replaced by complacency. I wasn't inspired anymore. And I didn't want to live out someone else's definition of success. So here I am. And in May of this year, I started my own company, Cove. And the first thing I did was find the right set of people to work with. We had an idea, we saw an opportunity, and we went for it. But as many of you in the audience already know this, it's really hard to start your own company. Every day, every single day is like a roller coaster. And the hardest battle is fighting your own psychology. After working on a product that impacted 700 million users, I'm starting from scratch. And I'm afraid of failing. I'm afraid of how people will perceive my work. And I live in this world of self-doubt, and sometimes that fear is even debilitating. But then after a sleepless night, I'm so excited to get into work. At Cove, we're building something great. We're solving a problem that we're passionate about. I'm working with people I deeply respect, and we're trying to create something of value. But for Cove to succeed, I had to come to grips with the reality that I could fail. And is that really that bad an outcome? For me, letting my fear preventing me from even trying is far worse. So I've taken that crucial step, and I've started on this journey. And next year, I hope to tell you the story of Cove.